Welcome back. In this tutorial I will further explain to you how the terrain works starting from our previous world containing a flat terrain and a character. So, what we want to do is add some more variation to terrain. Some hills, some slopes, some valleys and so on. For that we will go into the height map mode, height map mode excuse me, and we will use these brushes. I will go over them very quickly and briefly. If you hit the first one, you will you can create slopes by using right mouse button to go up and left mouse button to go down. And I'm using edit, undo or control U to go back. Now apart from these brushes you will also use the parameters for each brush which allows you to change your shape into a square or a circle. You can change the size of your brush. You can change the speed at which you raise or lower or every other thing and the softness. This button makes the size of your brush relative to your camera which is really really handy tool. If you hit it, your brush will be really big. If you zoom in, it will get smaller. It will still stay the same size compared to your camera. It will just get smaller compared to your terrain. And now get bigger and bigger and bigger. Which is more handy if you look at it this way. It's really practical to work with. Shortcuts are very valuable too. If you hold control and you scroll, you will make it bigger or smaller. If you hold shift, you will change the speed. And if you hold control and shift and scroll, you will change the softness. I will now put the size bit down again. And the speed. I usually work at a low speed. Then we have the up and down tool. The level tool is to make things well, level. <laughs> Which I will be the slope for first. Of course we have our slope. And then we level, making it more flat. Flatten is more drastic and will really make it flat. Average is smoothing it out between the higher and the lower point. For this, I'm also always using the right mouse click, which is generally the apply button in SMP engine. Then we have soften, which will, in this case, it doesn't do much because our terrain is already very soft. It will make it less rough and smoothen things out. The noise is the inverse and will make things noisier and more interesting. So, now that we've had these, we'll just start on our terrain. I will just start over here. A bit messy, but this works for now. We will start by doing our terrain a bit. And actually, if you work with these brushes, you'll notice that they are very smooth. It's, uh, it's hard to make convincing terrain using this, so I will show you another trick, which is the image at the bottom right. If you hit image, this will be empty. And it allows you to apply a height map. A height map is just an image containing black and white info, and it will define how your brush looks. As you can see here, the black will be no brush, and the white will be more brush. So, what you do is you just download the height map, get it from somewhere, a small one, and you just drag it on here. And then, if you go up and down now, it will be much, much more interesting. So, we will start by making some basic terrain using the up and down tool and just use the scrolling to make bigger and smaller. I'll just sculpt some terrain. I'll first go up and down a bit to define my basic layout of the terrain. First, you're making some sort of a mountain range that looks a bit interesting. And notice that your character is still aligned to the floor, it will always stay that way. 
unless you turn it off. I'll show that later. So we're making our mountain range. It's going to be. And note that if I'm zooming out, my brush will seem to be bigger because it's still relative to my camera. I'll make a big peak here, make my brush a bit smaller then. and then I will use the average tool to get rid of these very high peaks and remember control tilde to lock your camera on where you, every your mouse was. So I will smoothen things out. And now you see the brush is small because I zoomed in and off. I will either turn this off or just turn the size off for now and make it bigger again. And then just smoothen things out, average things. If you would use the soften here you will see that it will make things really soft and a bit unnatural as well. So we'll continue with the averaging, increasing the speed a bit, and we continue. I'm going to put it back on the relative size. And you keep doing this until you're satisfied with your terrain. Part of the train. If you want to average more, you can turn off the image by clicking it again and just make things very smooth by just using the standard brushes again. Now I'm going to stop here with this now and just suppose that this is good for now. You'll notice that it's still all very grassy. We don't want just a hill containing grass. So what we'll do is we have our material. If we just click it, we can just paint again with right click, but it's already grass. So we go to the second slot, double click, and we will again load the material. This time hit right mouse button to go up. We will select a stone material. And there we go. And set. So if you now just keep it selected. And let's see, we put our image on again and use and we uh, lock the camera again by using control tilde or this button here. We can just make things a lot easier on us. So, and then we'll just paint the rock texture wherever we want, which would be on the slopes. And we paint, 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 paint. And we continue doing this until we are satisfied with the result. These little holes you see, the artifacts are because of my height map, which wasn't perfect. So you could either fix your height map to prevent all further problems, or you could just raise them, smoothen them out to get them back okay. It's best to just change the height map so this doesn't occur anymore when you use it again. Now I'm just doing things really quickly, just so you see how it's done. You can also use this, which will only apply materials to slopes. So we enable the slope limiter. You can set the height of the slope here. And if you do, for example, now, it will only apply the material to that slope. It's not so useful now, so let's make a bit like this. And if we just make everything stone, you will see we we'll only apply texture to everything with this angle, which is not so useful now, but if we go back and we put this off, we just take our stone texture, put off the image, and make this entire thing stone which is the second way that you can do this. And it's pretty handy. You just make this stone. And then we switch the grass texture and enable the slope limiter. 
then you can see how only everything with no slope or nearly no slope is grass. We can increase the slope a bit to add more grass, as you can see, which can give fine results. But it will usually still require some tweaking afterwards without the slope limiter. But this works for fast prototyping. And there we have some interesting results. And there we go. Not bad for first attempt. So now we go back to world build of the invisible. Always nice to know the shortcuts. Control Enter. Generating terrain again. And then we can hit Control Shift Enter or World Play and play last build. And we will start here. We will move out to see from distance. And we have our mountain. If you hit F1, you can see some detail like the view range, frames per second, and so on. We hit the square brackets button, close one, to increase the view range, which can be handy so we can see our entire mountain in the editor. And there you have your first result. Some more interesting terrain. You can now keep doing this, make some more mountains, some more better mountains than this, which is unfinished, until you have something that you like. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to add more objects and do more stuff with the train.